I want to talk to you about the subject of making progress in your Bible. So I want to talk to you about making progress in your Bible. And most Christians go through this life never making any real progress in the book. And this book was given to them by God Almighty Himself. A lot of Christians know quite a few things about the Bible, but they don't know the Bible. And at the average church, there's no real progression being made when it comes to the Word of God. And I'm not trying to be critical of churches or nothing, but most times the sermons are just, they're kind of random and they're not working towards something. And even though they're great sermons, it doesn't work towards giving the people their Bible, having it laid out, being ready to give an answer to every man. And many times the pastor uh, might use the Bible for the first few minutes of the sermon. And that's all the congregation really gets for the whole week because they never touch the Bible outside of the church. And the, the pastors fail many times at getting the people interested in the Bible. And it's not their fault all the way because they're competing with sports idolatry the Hollywood movies, the music industry, and all these other things that the world has out there to get their attention. And Christians are just lazy today when it comes to the Bible. It's really sad and disgusting to see. Just there's no care for the Bible. Like I'll sit and try to talk to somebody about the Bible, they just instantly change the subject. They don't want to they don't want to hear about it. There's no interest there. I mean, you can sit and talk about the most interesting things in the Bible that come to your mind, then they just don't even care. It's just not real to them. But I want to talk to you about getting in your Bible for the new year. And I want to talk to you about how to make progress in your Bible, why you need to, and what will happen if you do make progress in your Bible. And something that's going to happen for sure if you do start making progress in your Bible is that you're going to grow and grow rapidly. In 2 Peter 3.18 it says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory now and forever. Amen. So growing in grace has to do with becoming more knowledgeable about the Lord Jesus Christ. It said, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. But the best way to grow in the knowledge of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to read His book. It's about Him from beginning to ending. Even the Old Testament he said himself, uh, if you believe me, if you believe Moses, you would believe me, you know. He wrote of me. You know, he said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. He told you himself he's in the Old Testament. Paul told you that Jesus is in the Old Testament. He called the rock that the water came out of, he called that he made that a picture of the Lord Jesus. And over and over you see the examples of how the Lord showed up in the Old Testament. The angel of the Lord. Um, he showed up as the angel of the Lord. He shows up in prophecies. He shows up in pictures and types. And you see it through the whole thing. From Genesis 1 all the way throughout the Bible. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. So you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You just read his book. Ephesians 4:14 4, through 15 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning crafty, craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ so it says may grow up into him in all things it says, be no more children tossed to and fro. You know, you need to get in the book and you'll begin to grow. And you won't be a, a child spiritually anymore. Psalm ninety-two, twelve: The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So there's still room to grow. There's always going to be room to grow. Uh, and a Christian will... Just stay like he was before he was saved if he doesn't get in his Bible. He may separate himself from the world in many ways, but until he separates himself unto something, the Word of God, he's just going to stay a spiritual baby or go back to what he was doing. Because you got to replace the things. You know, you're doing all these bad things. You can't just quit them. 
you've got to just you got to replace them with something too or they're just going to come right back into your life because you didn't fill that time space with something in your life it says in proverbs 4 18 but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day see there's always room for more always room to get better always room to grow to flourish to add more and you just want your light to shine brighter and brighter each year. That's what I love about a new year. It's a fresh start. You can just start all over. I mean, you can do that anytime, but I just love a fresh start at the new year. And you want each year to find you a better Christian, a better Bible student. Paul says in Philippians three twelve through 13, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So, he's reaching forward unto those things which are before. What happened last year is in the past. Now you're reaching for what's before. You want to be moving forward, making progress, making progress towards something. And when you don't get a plan or get some goals and approach the Bible with some type of system or organization to it, you just open a page and start randomly studying. I mean, that's good. Or open the page, start randomly re reading, and you know, that's good. But you, if you don't get some organization to it and a system going, you're not going to grow as rapidly. You're going to learn some things about the Bible doing that, obviously, but it's going to slow down your growth in the Scriptures. You want to get that understanding of the scriptures and interest and love for the word. And many times when somebody's just randomly here and there, they're, they're not getting that full understanding and they're not getting that interest and love for the word. You don't want to stay the same. Each year you want to grow. And no matter how much you've grown, how much you've went through the scriptures, how much you've went through in life, how much you've learned, you can still grow. When I was a kid, I'd, I'd have these little dinosaur toys and you put them in water. And when you put them in water, they'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you leave them in there too long, they'll just break in half. And I'd be so disappointed. I figured, found out I've, if I left them in there too long and they were broken in half. But it's like it's not, it's not like that with you in the Bible. You see, you get into the water... And get into the washing of water by the word. And you'll just keep growing and growing and growing. But you'll never, you'll never break in half if you stay in the word. You just get in the Bible. And you'll keep growing and growing until the rapture. You can tell when a guy did a whole lot of reading and studying. And had a lot of Bible time. Because he's... He... Uh, he has a lot of things to say in regards to the Word, so you can, still, you can tell he's been in the Word a lot, but you can tell that he did that early on in his Christian life and quit doing it maybe years into his ministry because he still says the same things that he learned 30 years ago and hasn't said anything else other than that stuff. So he got a lot from the Word early on in his Christian life, but he fell off, didn't keep going with it. And he's still trying to live on what he ate years ago. You know, 10 years ago, if I had a huge meal and I was stuffed from it and felt like I could never eat again, I can't, I can't still live off that huge meal even though that was more than I needed at that time. I had to keep eating every day. But, he, you know, he's still trying to live off what he ate years ago. And he never hit you with something that he just learned. And since the people in his congregation don't get in the word their self, they just die even quicker. Because they're using him as their spiritual IV. And he doesn't have any new water coming in to him himself. And the lamp is just going out. And by the time their kids get big, there's going to be no love, no interest, no excitement for the word of God at all. So the best thing you can do outside of getting somebody saved, is getting them interested in the Bible so they don't have to rely on you as their spiritual IV 
But while they are relying on you as like a spiritual IV hooked up to them, you're going to have to be keeping them alive, constantly in the book, constantly learning something, give them something fresh, something new, something they can chew on. You need to be continuously adding to your knowledge, to your arsenal, to your meditation closet in your brain. And Peter t and talks about adding some things to your Christian life. He says in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8, And beside all this, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you want to grow? You want to add some things? Make progress, make progress in your Bible. And you're going to add some things. And you're going to grow rapidly. Now, here's how you can start growing today. And I have to throw this in there, even though I believe most of my listeners know they need a King James Bible, obviously. You need to ditch the modern versions of the Bible. Get yourself a King James Bible. I think it would be great if you could get a wide margin Bible. If you don't like those, that's fine too. But I just really like them. I think that's that's the way to go. You can find them on Church Bible Publishers or go to Pure Words of Truth, uh, David Hoffman's website, get a wide margin common man's reference Bible, and just start marking it up. Be ready to take notes because you're going to forget things. You can't remember everything you're learning if you're constantly in the Bible, so you're going to forget, so you need to write it down. Have it wrote down. And if you want to grow rapidly in the Scriptures, one of the first things that you need to do in the Word, when you're studying the Word, one of the first things you need to do is go book by book. It says in Acts 20, 27, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Every book is important. Every word is important. And you need an overall picture of the Word of God. I have an overview done and ready on every book of the Bible and a series of outline videos for every book of the Bible. And they're all in a playlist on this channel. And you can go to those and get that information out of those videos into your wide margin Bible or into your journal, whatever you use. And if you do one to two books of the Bible a week, you can have it laid out in your wide margin Bible in a year or at most a year and a couple months. And this will help you know where you're at in the Bible when you're studying, when you're reading, and answering questions. You need to know what each book is about. You may not know everything in the book, but you need to know what it's about, where it is in the Bible, why it's there. You need to know how Jesus is pictured throughout that certain book. So go book by book, Genesis through Revelation. It won't take long, just like this week, you can start in Genesis. Read Genesis. Read through it. It won't take that long. And then look at one of those overview videos of Genesis or that outline. Get that outline in there in your, in, at the beginning of that book of the Bible. Go to that playlist where I got outlines for every book of the Bible. You can kind of copy mine or do it however you want and get that information in there. You do that for every book of the Bible. You're going to have a way better understanding of the Bible by the time you get done than you had when you first started. And it's going to cause you to grow rapidly. Now after that, or while you're in the process of going book by book, you can pick a book of the Bible and go verse by verse in that book. It says in 1 Corinthians 2.13, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So you can go verse by verse in a book, compare verses, compare words, compare phrases, come to the interpretation that God wants you to have, comparing spiritual things with spiritual with each verse. And on this channel, I've got a verse by I've got verse by verse studies for quite a few books. I've got almost all the Pauline epistles done. So if you want to learn about Romans, you can go to the, that Romans playlist. Or uh, Genesis, I've got Genesis, I've got 
I've just started Exodus. I'm, I'm in like seven chapters into Exodus. I've got much of most of Second Kings done. I'm working on it too. I've got Revelation. I've got James. I got much of the Psalms. First John, Jude. You can go. You can go on there. I got Titus, Second Thessalonians. You can go on there. Listen to those. Mark up your Bible as you listen. And if you can't stand listening to me, there's way better people to listen to than me anyway. If you go to sites like goodpreaching.com, that's preaching as in P-R-E-A-C-H-I-N.com, goodpreaching.com, you can find verse-by-verse -verse studies for every book of the Bible by way better Bible teachers than me. That's been doing it way longer. No, way more. Uh, way older. And uh, they can help you learn the Bible. Go verse by verse. Just That's what I did when I first became a Christian. That's what made me fall in love with the Bible was a verse by verse rundown of Revelation. A guy named Robert Hensley, who is of no relation that I know of from a different state. I don't even know him personally. But I listened to his Revelation verse by verse. And I, I just I fell in love with the Bible listening to those verse by verse. Then I found out about David Hoffman. That's how I found out about him. Was those he got the, all those verse by verse studies for most of the books of the Bible. You got guys like Carl Stevens, who's got verse by verse. Uh, Michael Caesar, a guy from New York, who does tons of verse by verse. You can go on Sermon Audio. A guy named Mike Reagan has tons of verse by verse. He's mostly just preaching through it, so maybe not as detailed, but it's it's really good too. And uh, Greg Greg Miller or Gregory Miller, I believe is his name on Sermon Audio. He's got a lot of verse by verse. Uh, Robert Breaker got a lot of verse by verse. Gene Kim. And if you've got if you can afford it, on the Bible Baptist Bookstore, Ruckman's got tons of audio verse by verse. Some of them are a bit pricey, but they're they're just they're really good. Uh, Ruckman helped me fall in love with the Bible, the verse by verse studies. Uh, that's who influenced most of the Bible believers today is Ruckman. All the guys that do the the good verse by verse studies were influenced by Ruckman. So uh, a lot of what they're saying is what they got from him in a way, and. Um, James Knox, he's got a lot of good verse by verse through every book of the Bible. Although it's kind of expensive to get all of them, it's over a thousand dollars. So I don't have it, but I've 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 got some of the individual ones. They're really good. And James Melton got some good verse by verse through every book of the Bible. A lot better price. And you know, you don't have to agree with everything these guys are saying to get something from them. You know, you, you've got to learn to filter everything they say through the Bible as you go verse by verse, and you can learn something from everybody. If what they're saying is true, then it doesn't really matter who they are. We're all sinners. None of us are perfect. Oh, and Bevins Welder, another good verse by verse guy. Go to my3bc.com. Find tons of verse by verse on there. And other stuff, too. And just learn the Bible verse by verse. <clears throat> and each week, and along with choosing a book to look at, along with going verse by verse, maybe do, do just 10 verses verse by verse a week. Just 10. Do just one book of the Bible a week. And then choose one doctrine a week to study. And if you just choose one major doctrine a week to study, or even not even a major one, you're going to make tons of progress in your Bible. And there are major important doctrines that are foundations to what we believe. And there, there are doctrines that you really need to get down and learn. For example, the doctrines of salvation, like imputation, justification, propitiation, spiritual circumcision. <coughs> and those sound like big words, yeah, but... I mean, I didn't even graduate high school, and I learned all these words. And when you learn these words, what they mean, 
It really makes you understand you can't lose your salvation. It really helps you understand what you actually got when you got salvation. You need to learn the doctrines of the Lord Jesus. You need to know about the virgin birth, the resurrection, the deity of Jesus Christ. Imagine if you just took one doctrine a week, just one, and studied that. That would be 50 or so more doctrines a year that you know. So imagine if you took a book of the Bible a week, a chapter a week, going verse by verse in a chapter, and a topic. Uh, that's, that's tons of Bible knowledge and growth that you'll get just in one year. And 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine is what scripture's for, first, primarily. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Nobody wants doctrine anymore. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now, a lot of guys, most people, when I listen to them, they use this verse to say that almost it's like they're saying, enough with the teaching, throw out the teaching, you just need preaching. And their whole thing's just based on preaching. I, I, I don't think that's what this is saying at all. I think this is saying, you know, they got teachers that don't have good doctrine. It says they will not endure sound doctrine. Nobody wants to hear sound Bible doctrine anymore. And if they hear any doctrine at all, it's not sound doctrine. But just about every preacher out there says we need more preaching and do almost do out with the teaching. I think that's because they're so used to hearing the watered-down teaching that it isn't doing any good for them. And obviously it wouldn't if it's so watered down. But real Bible teaching has become a lost start. You hardly hear anybody ever do real Bible teaching. And when you get a real solid uh, Bible teaching... It excites the people, and they, they act as if they've never heard anything like it, and it, it can get them interested in their Bible. And that way, they're not just relying on you every week as their spiritual IV. They're going home and getting in the Bible theirself. And even in your most backslid condition, if somebody loves the Bible, there's a good chance they'll still be reading the Bible in their most backslid condition, and it brings them back. To, to wanting to be in fellowship with God. For example, in my most backslid conditions that I've gotten in as a Christian, I was still reading the Bible. There wasn't a time in my saved life, even in my worst state, that I wasn't reading the Bible. And each time, me being in the Bible every day brought me back in fellowship with God. So it's like you get somebody interested in the Bible, this is the most valuable thing you can do for them outside of... Uh, leading them to the Lord. But what is what is needed is doctrine and real Bible-believing teaching. And if you'll do real Bible-believing teaching to people, they're going to come to you and say, I've never heard anything like that. Uh, I've been, They'll be like, I've been saved 50 years. I've never heard nothing like that. That was awesome. All this stuff. Because a, it's a lost start. And when somebody thinks of teachers, they think of this sissy, wimpy, devotional type junk. And that's not what it is at all. But real Bible-living teaching is what can help someone fall in love with the Bible and make it come alive to them. In Titus 1, 9 through 11, it says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine. Doctrine is so important, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, for there are many unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. So what you have is a bunch of guys going around teaching things which they ought not. They have everyone believing that Christianity is just like this sweet, soft, milky thing that has its hands out for your money. And it's just, they only give the devotional aspect of the Bible, never doctrine. And if, when they do give doctrine, it's false doctrine. And it's women preachers, and that's disgusting, and, and just not real Bible-believing teaching in, at all. I mean, what, what manly man wants to hear a woman telling him what to do? 
and how to learn the Bible. I don't. I don't like that at all. I don't. Hopefully, as a man, you know more Bible than your wife. And if you don't, you need to get into the Bible right now and make sure that you're teaching your wife the Bible and not the other way around. <clears throat> to me, I would rather my wife... I'd rather, have, I'd rather have to have my wife open the pickle jar than to be able to explain the Bible to me. Have to explain the Bible to me. I want to be the one to explain the Bible to her. <clears throat> but don't forget about what Paul says. In 1 Timothy four thirteen through 16, he says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Remember what I said about uh, people learn a lot of doctrine, maybe an excess amount of doctrine early on. Then they quit. So they got a lot of Bible knowledge, and you can tell there was a time in their life where they did study, but they didn't continue. They're never given nothing that they just learned. If you're consistently in the Bible, you're always going to have something that you just learned to give to somebody. And I'm not saying it would be easy to do these things. Anything worth doing is hard. I've spent hours and hours and hours studying, reading, and multitasking. And I completely understand about the time thing. If you're like me, you've got a full-time job that requires a lot of overtime. Sometimes 50 to 5 to 60, 70 hours a week. And it makes it even harder. But that's where multitasking comes in. <coughs> you got to find a way to multitask as you're working. Whether it be going over things in your mind as you're working, if you can get a pair of headphones, if they'll allow that at your job, that that's just, I'll always, as long as I can, I'm always going to have uh, some of those AirPods because they're, they're, they're discreet. You can have them up under something, maybe a toboggan or, a, or something on your head. You can be in the Bible the entire time you're at work. The entire time at work, that I'm at work, I'm listening to the Bible on my headphones or listening to preaching or listening to teaching by somebody the entire time. If I'm not working and I'm in the break room, I'm reading the Bible. I've got my Bible open. I'm either reading it or I'm studying it or I'm, I'm making an outline or something. It's just, there's only so much time in a day. Time is a gift. You've got to use the time wisely. If you just go to work every day, and there'll be times where I'm at work 12, 13, 14 hours. And what if I just went to work and I just, while I was working, that's all I was doing, I was just working. All that time's gone. And what if I just, when I went to the break room, all I did was just sit there and eat slowly and small talk with people in the break room like most people do. All that time's been wasted. Where you could have been getting in the Bible. Multitasking is key if you don't have a lot of time. And a lot of people say, I've seen these in the comments. I don't reply to comments much. Most of them, a lot of them are, are just negative comments from people who are bitter about something. But a lot of people say, man, you really need to get a life. All you do is YouTube videos and it's not a real ministry and all this. No, actually, it's not all I do and, and the slightest. I actually work 50 to 65 hours a week. And I've got a wife. I've got kids. I have to do all the regular life stuff that all these people do that think that they got so much more to do. But the thing is, people just like to have an excuse, in the, every excuse in the world not to do something. And when they see you doing something, it makes them envious and they just want to find fault in you and say, well, he's only able to do that because he just has no life or, or a job or kids. He just sits at home and does this. No, I'm, I'm rarely, I'm rarely... I rarely have time to just sit down. The only time that I have time to just sit down and, and do nothing is like right now when I'm recording this and I have to get up about an hour and a half early before work at like 4 a.m. to do all this. So there is, I'm not saying this bragging. I'm saying this 
you can make time for the Bible. When you don't have time, you can make time. Like I said, I'm working 50 to 60 something hours a week many times. I've got wife, I've got kids, I've got a house. So I've got stuff around the house that you would have to do that needs to be done. Stuff like that. But I'm still making time for the Bible. Anybody can do it. You just have to shove it in there. Actually, you need to uh, be so into the Bible that you're having to make time for everything else. So learning the Bible, the next point is learning the Bible is day by day. It's a day by day thing. You have to beat the flesh down daily. Because especially when you're first starting out, your flesh isn't going to want to do any of this that I'm telling you to do. In 1 Corinthians 15, 31, it says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. Paul says, I die daily. You got to get up in the morning every day and say, I'm going to make progress in my Bible and beat the flesh down. And, you know, don't sit around and stress about the long haul. Just get up and read what needs to be read today. Study what you need to be studying on today. And over time, you'll be a battle-hardened soldier when it comes to the Bible because you've just done it every day. It's a routine. It builds character. And it isn't going to happen overnight. But if you do what I'm telling you in this video, then you'll be a whole lot better next year than you are right now. And Ecclesiastes 12, 12, it says, Much studies a weariness to the flesh. It's, it's exhausting to study. Like I said, I wake up early in the morning to study my Bible and do these lessons. And there's times when the only thing I want to do is just go back to bed and not wake up until it's time to go to work. You just persevere through it. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And you make it a daily routine. You can make progress in your Bible, but it re requires putting in the time and making the sacrifices. And when you get up early to get into the Bible, you are presenting your body a living sacrifice, like Paul talks about in Romans. And Psalm 1, 1 through 1, 2 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Day and night. Day after day. Night after night. This is how you make progress in your Bible. It's a day by day thing. Bible, uh, learning the Bible is something that you, you do over time. And you get better at it. And you get faster at it. But in the outcome of it is invaluable. Because it goes on to say in Psalm 1, 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So starting now, get a daily Bible routine. Some people can give more time into this than other people. Maybe you can only do 30 minutes a day. Maybe at your job you that's impossible to multitask and you're there for 16 hours. You can't listen to headphones, you, and it's so strenuous on your mind that you can't even meditate on the Word of God while you're doing it. That's completely understandable. You have to work, and maybe you know your 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 wife is crazy and your kids are crazy, and you can't do anything at home. So maybe you can just get up a little, like thirty minutes early, or stay in your car thirty minutes in the parking lot at work for some quiet time in the Bible. And God will honor that 30 minutes. Maybe you can do three hours. But you can learn something. Just gift, just doing 30 minutes a day, you can learn something. It says in Deuteronomy 17, 18 through 19, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. So there's your verse for daily Bible reading, and most people are worried about the time that it takes to make progress in the Bible. And that is what pe keeps people away from it. And this is, why I wanna, this is what leads to my next point. The greatest thing to do would be to make the Bible 
your hobby. Imagine if you traded in a good portion of your hobbies that you have for the Bible. And the Bible wouldn't seem like a chore anymore because you're in it because you love it, because it's your hobby now. You're in it not only to live clean, to stay right with God, but also for your source of entertainment. How many times have you ever heard somebody say that? I mean, I honestly, uh, most times I'm reading the Bible because I'm entertained by it. It entertains me. You know, the Bible's a very entertaining book. I binge it like a TV show. You know how somebody gets a TV show and they just binge watch it for hours and hours and hours? That's the way I am with the Bible. I, I don't read novels. I read the Pauline epistles. You know, I don't hunt animals. I've never been hunting. I hunt for hid treasures in the Bible. I'm not saying you shouldn't have hobbies or shouldn't do those things. I'm just saying if you make the Bible your main hobby then it's going to be a lot easier to make progress in the Bible. Maybe you're one of these people. You can do all these hobbies and still make progress in the Bible. But some people can't. But you just got to live in it. You got to live in the Word. Make it more important than your cigarettes, than your cell phone, than your necessary food. In Philippians 1.21, it says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Make the Bible your hobby. All that time that you spend smoking, put a... New Testament, where that pack of cigarettes is in your pocket or wherever it is, you'll reach for them cigarettes. that will be a Bible there. It'll remind you to read your Bible. You've already got a habit of going to that pocket for the cigarettes. Might as well put <coughs> a little New Testament there. But for me to live is Christ. That should be what you're living for, right? Colossians 3, 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall you also appear with him in glory. It says, who is our life? Most people, their life is their hobbies. Make the Bible your hobby. 1 Corinthians 10, 23, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. You know, there's a lot of hobbies you can have that's not bad. But are they as edifying as it would be if, if the Bible was your hobby? Hobbies are good. They help you stay sane many times, but you get the Bible as a hobby, you're going to be edified. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Imagine how much easier it would be to keep your thought life in check with the Bible as your hobby. Paul said in 1 Timothy 4.15, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. It's going to profit you. Making progress. You're profiting from it. You're growing. Most people give themselves wholly to their hobby, a video game, a TV show, fishing, hunting, golfing. What if you gave yourself wholly to the scriptures? Uh, this new year, make a resolution to get in fighting shape. That's my next point. Get in fighting shape. And I don't mean your physical body. I mean spiritually. Get in fighting shape. Right now, we aren't fighting with carnal weapons. We're not using physical weapons. We are in a spiritual battle. So we're using spiritual weapons. The Word of God, the sharp two-edged sword. We're operating in the spiritual kingdom of God. And if we were fighting a physical kingdom of heaven, we would use physical weapons. And focused and being prepared more physically. But no, we're, we need to be more pre prepared spiritually for a spiritual fight. Our fight is a spiritual one. Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And there is definitely a fight going on. We're being attacked from all sides, and the enemy takes pride in the fact that he's making you not even realize that you're under attack. He's, he's sneaking up on you because you're walking around focused on the physical when the attack is spiritual. <coughs> Paul was in a fight. He said in 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. He said, I fought a good fight. 
Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 12, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. For unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. The saints have always been in a fight. In Hebrews 10, 32, it says, But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Hebrews eleven thirty four quenched, talking about these, these saints in the Hall of Fame. Hebrews eleven thirty four they quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. 1 Corinthians 9, 26, Paul says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. You may not be in a physical hand-to-hand -hand fight <clears throat> or something like a boxer, but you're fighting offensively and defensively spiritually. 1 Corinthians 9, 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should become, should be a castaway. Like I said, it's day-to-day. -day. It's like a race. And when I see... and <laughs> when I say race, I mean a marathon. Start today. Go at a slow and steady pace every day until the rapture. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25 says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every one that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And this Spiritual race you're running, <clears throat> you're doing it to obtain an incorruptible crown. And in this marathon, it's a race. You get the, you learn these doctrines, you continue in them day by day. It's like a marathon. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God, right hand of the throne of God. In Job 17, 9, it says, The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. Start today in your Bible, living clean, you'll get stronger and stronger. You'll flourish. You'll be profiting. You'll be prosperous. And 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8, but refuse profane and old wise fables. Listen to this. And exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Get in fighting shape. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So spiritual exercise, it not only profits you at the judgment seat of Christ in heaven, it's, it has a promise of the life that now is. It's profitable now to get into the book. You're going to see instant results from it. Bodily exercise profiteth little. Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So how can you get in spiritual fighting shape? Well, here's the ways. By memorizing scripture. Psalm 119.11 says, The word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. And <clears throat> I'm going to post weekly memory verses, something simple, maybe five verses a week, here on this YouTube channel. I've already posted five or six verses from Romans chapter 1. And if you'll get that and listen to it and write it down on an index card, and then read those to yourself over and over. Take four words. Read those four words over and over in your mind till you got those four words memorized. Move on to the next four words. Memorize those until you've got one verse memorized. Then move on to the next verse. And you can listen to those that uh, those memory verses I put on here on your way to work, on the way back from work, while you're working, until you have them memorized. And that may not seem like a lot, just five verses, but if you do that every week for 2023, you'll have around 200 to 250 verses in your mind that you can pull out on the forces of darkness that you didn't have before. So memorize scripture. 
Meditate. That's an, this is the next thing. Meditate. In Psalm 1 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You know how you carry around a phone in your pocket? How you carry around that pack of cigarettes in your pocket? Get a small New Testament and put it where, they, where your phone was. Put your phone in another pocket. You already have a habit of reaching for where your phone is. Pull the little New Testament out and meditate on some verses. Read them and think about them. Then write down the thoughts that the Lord gave you. That's meditating. This will exercise you spiritually and get you in fighting shape. It will transform you by the renewing of your mind. It will sanctify and cleanse you, but with the washing of water by the word. You need to read. That's, <coughs> that's the next thing is to read. Isaiah thirty four sixteen says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. You know, Sam Gipp, he reads like two hours a day. Eight, eight reads through the Bible eight times a year. I don't think you have to do that. If you just give 15 minutes reading, if all you can give is 15 minutes reading reading it straight through, that'll put you through the Bible at least once or twice a year. Just 15 minutes. And I'm posting daily uh, Bible reading where you can read along with me. And it's just something short, something simple. I, I'm doing this to encourage my listeners to read through the Bible so far, they've been about 15 or so minute videos. That's it. I'm putting them on YouTube at 4 a.m. So you can read it before work. You can read it on the way home from work. And if you don't have time to read it, then just listen to it on your way. The next thing you need to study. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Memorizing is good. Reading is good. Meditating is good. Those three things are involved in study. But you also need to like study, study at the same time. And I'm going to be posting more verse-by-verse -verse studies, more topical studies. I'm even on, uh, planning on doing like a Bible Institute thing and start from the outside and work, work. let's work our way in. The Bible is a puzzle. We'll start on the outside and work our way in and just... If you can, get you a wide margin Bible or a journal or some little notebook at the dollar store and be ready to write down notes. Get a Bible program like eSword and this will help you and we'll study the Bible together. I want to help you get interested in the Bible. Now the next thing you need to do, talk about it. In 2 Timothy 2.2 2, it says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who should be able to teach others also. You see, you're going to be learning a lot. You're going to need someone to talk to about it. You're going to need somebody to pass this stuff down to. Find some Bible believers in your area or online and tell them what God showed you in the Bible. Next thing is practice it. In James 1, 22 through 25, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So learning the Bible is an amazing thing, but it doesn't do you any good if you're not going to put it to use. You need to talk to somebody about, about it, and you need to practice it. And the more you use it and talk about it, the more you use what you learn, the stronger you'll be, and the more that God's going to show you. But I hope this has been an encouragement to you to get you started in making progress in your Bible.